Do you mind if people all come and watch at Indy if our rounds finish quickly? I expect that to happen, I heard. <clears throat> so not at all. Hey, Kaz, welcome. Welcome to a live one. Seems gonna take a little bit of damage from its mana, but it's pretty good. Unfortunately, I have to shock to fetch a black source. Oh, yeah, it's a slippery bull goal. Um, Jace, with that 16 month three subscription, thank you very much and welcome back. I do appreciate it. Yeah, that's basically the question, right? Slug Monster is. Are the blue cards better than... Man, I'm such a joke, chat. I'm such a joke. I I always say I'm going to look at the mana bases, but then I crack the first fetch land, and I look at the fact that there's three blood crypts, three watery graves, and two steam vents here. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to take a hot second here and I'm going to create a command for people to get to my mana base article because more people need to read my mana base article. Building mana bases in modern. All right, let's drink that one. This one. If you I don't recall who submitted this deck, but you should I should start writing that down, seriously. You should. You need to look at my mana base article and we'll talk about some of the details of it afterwards. But yeah, yeah, no fast lands. Eight, eight shock lands in a deck without... Also, like, we're just like stone. Do I have Liliana's in this deck? I have zero Liliana's. All I can do is race. All right. Um, I guess, I guess I'm taking... I guess I'm taking a Griff... Uh, Griff Spoon doesn't even do anything. I guess I'm taking Spider Umbra. Oh, there's a Steam Vents in my hand. Oh, Lord. That's... Yeah. Six... Six Shocklands in... In these three-color decks should really be the ceiling. Unless you have a very specific reason. There was a blue red Fey in the five O's. That's exciting. I wonder if that was Diva. Nice. They cut all of the tapped creature lands. I could see that. Pia on the board is interesting. I don't hate that. Are they a wizard? Are they wizards? They are not. All right, let's focus. Sorry, let's focus. Let's get dumpstered here real quick. I assume this is unwinnable, but we'll, we'll do it for the sake of science. Yeah, that's the hope. That's the hope. I'm gonna top a third land here. It's gonna send maybe on the back of these bolts and brutalities we can race if they never draw a if my opponent draws a uh a what's it called a uh a lifelink enchantment i'm gonna pack it in but if we can avoid them drawing a lifelink enchantment here we could be okay i'm expecting this escalate to miss I just want to get this Dread Boar out of my hand, so that way I can cast this Bedlam Revler sooner. The freeze ends when the donation queue is under 40 decks, is my, is my intended goal. <clears throat> 
and I don't really have a set day for when we'll get under 40 decks because we do still have people adding decks to the queue with 50 plus dollar donations and tier three subscriptions. So I don't, it's hard for me to estimate exactly when that's gonna happen. We've got one, two, three, four, five, so I can bolt them and then play this Bedlam Reveler. Unfortunately, both of these things fly, so it's a little unfortunate on our end. <laughs> We're at least partially in this game because they haven't drawn a lifelink enchantment. How many decks were in the queue when the freeze started? 87, I think. I think 87. Sounds right. It was almost 90. <laughs> Cheerios also put up a result in... Um, what was that event? It was a, there was a classic that I put up a result in. I had 5 out of League 2, so... I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so, I'm so confused. Why is, are there not Daybreak Coronets in their deck? I wonder if they imported a list from somewhere that someone had selected Daybreak Chaplain instead of Daybreak Coronet, and they imported it and started the league. I will bet good money that there are not Daybreak Coronets in their deck. Kyle Not with the nine month resubscription. Thank you. Thank you for the continued support. I do appreciate it. Welcome back. I am pretty confident in my assessment that there are not currently Daybreak Coronets in their deck. And that's kind of, we're still gonna die. I would like, I would like the record to reflect that we don't have a chance and we are going to die and we are going to die in a blaze. I would like I would like the record to reflect that I am aware that even with that mistake, we have 0% chance of winning this. But it's still hilarious. It's still hilarious. Think 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 what you copy and paste. Not that I think when I copy and paste cuz look at this mana base, but you know, details. Like why why are there two basic swamps and only one mountain in my double red deck? <sighs> I mean, yep. Rogue, thank you for the 25 months. Thanks for all the various editing and things you've suggested in my in Discord on the way. I'm going to concede if they make this bigger than my Anger of the Gods. God bless you, opponent. So, like, is this a blessing or is it a curse in disguise? Because because they didn't make it bigger than my Anger, I'm going to continue playing Magic and eventually lose. But I have, like, the illusion of a chance, right? going on Zeratol. People suck. There's a lot of people that suck. Don't let them get to you. Don't let the people who suck get to you. It's hard sometimes. Sometimes it's very hard to not let them get to you. Um, I feel like Inquisition is probably fine. Masculate this bad boy.
That's because I just fired up. The way Twitch works, it takes you. It takes you a while to collect viewers. I am experimenting with a later start time. Yeah, I so I went live 14 minutes ago. Usually it takes an hour or so to build up to a your average viewer count. No, I'm going to the gym in the morning, Tannen. When I started streaming full time, I like lost like the the ability to I stopped I stopped making time to go to the gym, so I just stopped going, and that's bad. So I am experimenting with a with a slightly later start time Tuesday through Thursday. So when so instead of going from nine I, I, I had been doing nine to three on Tuesday through Thursday, so now I'm doing doing eleven to five. So I can go to the gym for an hour and a half to two hours in the morning. I've got you, Cor. Let's go ahead and cast this. Um, I'm actually a mana short on doing anything useful here, right? You should play Sneak and Show. I right, just saved you a bunch of work. Saved you a bunch of work, Tannen. Play Sneak and Show. Did you see Did you see Bob Hong's post about Sneak and Show, by the way, after his tournament performance this past weekend on Facebook? It was A+, plus, and you should look it up on his Facebook if you didn't. It was just... <laughs> Just great. Yeah, I, Bob is just like, just very real. Just like doesn't cut any of the crap, doesn't put up any crap. Hey, Craig Fur, thank you for the the seven month resubscription. Welcome back, I appreciate it. Let's slide this out here for one. So we talked about the mana base in this deck a little bit. There's no Blood Moons in this deck, and I think... I think... Um, I think it's probably a mistake. In addition to the mana base, like, having too many Shock Lands, I think if I was fitting other things into the mana base here, I might consider a Creature Lander, too, to, like, be able to, like, have flexibility. Yeah, like some tar pits. Tar pit's pretty good. The mana base is definitely super awkward and wrong based on just like the fetches and the shocks and the basic composition. But I think in my if I were to begin fixing it, I would definitely include I would definitely include some amount of creature land, probably at least two. This is the first match of the day, yep. Yeah, but that the problem with Legacy Lukatog is you can't metagame like that. Well, I think Sneak and Show and Miracles are probably two of the best decks in the format. Like, people are going to show up playing other things. They're just they're just working too hard, Tannen. Just tell just be the voice of reason. Just be like, folks, shut up and play the good decks. Good, the good decks are good for a reason. Play them. Well, their hand is slow, but they've got this keen sense going, and we really don't have a way to race or pressure. The content has been even better the last few months. Keep up the great work, Rapner. Thanks for being here for so long. I appreciate it. Thanks for the 14 months. If I was attending the Pro Tour and playing Legacy, or like helping people prepare for Legacy, I would expect a disproportionate amount 
of both Eldrazi and Death and Taxes at the Pro Tour because those decks don't require piles of reserve list cards. And that would be... Would expect budget constraints to come into play at this Pro Tour. Especially for Legacy. Maybe not, maybe not for the other formats, but definitely for Legacy. This might be a little bit too aggressive on my part, but I think I need to be aggressive here to win. Nice, Lord. Thanks for using the code. Glad it was helpful for you. Explosives. Another red loam. All right. Would you make the same call for the team open in Dallas? No, I'd expect the team, the team tournament where people are all coming from the United States to be, to have, to have a little bit more, be a little bit more competitive in the light terms of legacy. Which maybe that's an American bias and that's unrealistic, but I feel like, you know, legacy decks are really expensive here. People that work with lower incomes in other countries like it's got to be even more absurd there right I'll take a peek tonight when I'm done exclusive cards. Even that does that include reserve list cards, Quiltman? I'd assume those cards are harder to get. But that could just be my that's what my gut says. I don't have anything actual actual backing for that. Well, Tabernacle was printed in a different language and had a larger printing in that different language. So that's like not because it's from another country, that's because of like print run things. Sand seems pretty good. So, I think I actually want to fetch shock on one, and the reason for that is I want Watery Grave to be my first land, so that way I can play turn one Inquisition and then turn two Tap Land Thought Scour. Do you share a record at the the, at the weekend? Y'all did real bad, right, Tannen? Or am I misremembering? Oh, three. This magic game I've, I've heard so much about, Tannen, it sounds like it's really low variance. What do you think? <laughs> Morning, Mr. Maple Syrup. You're not wrong, Be Rich. You're not, you're not wrong. Um, so I know they have Bolt plus Looting here. I think because I drew this, I'm actually going to wait to play this Thought Scour. So that way I can go like Shock, Blood Crypt, play Pyromancer, Thought Scour, get a token out of it guaranteed. Because I know they're going to kill my young Pyromancer, but I'd like to generate a little bit of value out of it before they do. Oh, that's a tilt. Steam Flogger with the sub gift for Tannen. <laughs> Look, Tannen, now you can put my face in Twitch. I knew that's what you always wanted in life. Thanks for the, the sub gift, Flogger. They took my Thought Scour. That's interesting. Huh. Huh. 
Work world would be a pain to resolve IRL. You're not wrong. Uh, I'm just going to cast my cards. This is going to die, but... I can't just sit here and do nothing. Like they have, they have lingering souls in their bin. They're going to just bury us. Rekindled soul. With that tier 2 resub. Thanks for the five months. Uh, be sure to drop me a message in private. Letting me know what deck you'd like to bump in the queue this month for your tier 2 sub. As always, tier 2 subs get to bump a deck in the queue of their choice by 10 points. Uh, so I have four instants and sorceries in my bin. So if I draw a land, I get to cast this Bedlam Revler. Hey, Tannen, are you going to Indy, by the way? I don't remember if I asked you that or not. So am I supposed to jam the Bedlam here? Or am I supposed to dread bore this? I think I have to take their thing off the table. Because, like, I'm not I'm not going to be able to block their Bedlam Revler next turn because they're going to trigger a prowess. I only have five instants and sorceries in my graveyard, so this unfortunately costs three at the moment. Look at you being a responsible adult. I don't want to play magic anymore. Maybe. I wasn't sure if we were going to get, if I was going to have time to play I was going to have time to play four full leagues in six hours, but this one, this is feeling like it's going to be a quick league, chat. This is just feeling like it's going to be a quick league. Um, What am I doing with my life? You're not wrong, Op. You're not, you're not wrong. All right, so Fatal Push is pretty bad in this matchup. I definitely want these Electrolyzes. I don't know. I don't know if I want Angers or Engineered Explosives. I feel like I could go either way on these. I'm going to keep the Reman because Remanding their Flashback Spells is decent. One of, one of the reasons, what websites do you accept links for decks that have community, accept links for decks and have community comment on? Uh, tapped out is fine. Tapped out or MTG Goldfish are my preferred websites when people send me deck lists. Once, uh, once the freeze is up, I'm going to be very strict about any deck anybody wants to submit needs to go through my Google form. I don't know my true feelings about Legacy. I'm playing Modern on the team event this weekend. Don't, don't tell him Oz. Shh. When you remand a spell that is flashbacked, you get to draw a card for your remand and the flashback spell is still exiled and has no effect. Because the way flashback is worded, it says if that spell would be put anywhere other than the exile zone, exile it instead. So Remand is very good against flashback spells. I guess Remand's been so bad in Modern for so long, that's an interaction a lot of people might not be aware of. So Remand, Remand is actually very, very good against flashback cards. And then here's, here's the important thing. Here's the important thing to know. This is important to know. Because magic is intuitive and easy to understand, if you remand a card that's been cast out of the graveyard by Jace Friend's Prodigy, that card goes back to the opponent's hand. That, that card goes back to the opponent's hand. Because magic is intuitive and easy to understand. I am not joking. If you, re if you remand a flashback card... The card doesn't happen and is exiled. If you remand a card that was flashback via Jace's Vrind's Prodigy, it goes back to the, the controller's hand. Because Jace Vrind's Prodigy technically doesn't give the card flashback. Yep, correct, Ganon. You can also cast uh, Living End out of the graveyard with Jace via uh, As Foretold.
All right, so we're gonna go Steam Vents Dot Scour here. This deck is. As I am playing this deck, I am coming to the conclusion that this deck is essentially both a bad Death Shadow deck and a bad Mardu Pyromancer deck. B20 Bandit, thank you very much for the bets. I appreciate the support. Uh, I think I'm going to top top here. See, I cleverly left my important card on top of my deck. Cleverly, cleverly left the val. Ah, uh, uh. Yeah, my biggest, my biggest piece of advice would be if you wanted to like stick on the Grixis Reveler plan. The the biggest piece of advice is you really need. You really need to clean up the mana. Hey, Mac Daddy, I love the content and the values. Keep up the excellent work. Thanks for the five month three subscription. Thanks for sending your fun money this way again. Also, I feel like playing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You want some number... I feel like some number of Faithless Lootings are a must. I get that Faithless Looting feels bad with... I get that Faithless Looting feels bad without Lingering Souls, but it's just like a card that helps get through. All right, that, that means I can't win anymore. I just have no, no catch-up mechanics left because our graveyard is gone. Yeah. And another another way that this deck is, is that like part of the reason why Mardu Pyromancer is such a good modern deck is because it gets to leverage cards like Blood Moon and Snaring Bridge and these other just like raw powerful magic cards. And this deck's not leveraging any of those cards. Thing in the Ice is actually a really interesting suggestion. Like that's a that's a genuinely powerful thing you get you get from playing blue. I mean, Blood Moon is a truly obnoxious card, but it's certainly very powerful. Blood Moon is easily one of the worst things about playing modern, but to deny it's powerful is silly. It's a very, very good card. All right, we had our black source. That's good for us. Um, I'm gonna go top top here. I think I'm in the market for just like a bunch of spells with this young PZ. Dr. Dre says. Do I... I think I spot check with this brutality against Marsh Flats, like take a peek at what's going on. Check for removal before I jam that Dr. PZ into play. I mean, any deck Amped Phil is like capable of like winning matches of magic. I don't really think it's like better in one format or the other. I just feel like we really kind of lack a coherent game plan and just like it's just this kind of odd collection of like powerful powerful cards that don't really mesh well together <sighs> oh we're gonna get blood moon out of the game twenty dollar donation there from zero forever thank you very much 
What's the note with that one? Grizzlies, I don't know what it is, but I love it. And we will call him Jack. So, Marty, Pyromancer's employment's about to be terminated. We can maybe play a game of magic. We do have a basic island. Morning Saw 3. Yeah, I like the blue-red deck. It's a lot of fun. Feels moderately competitive and is a lot of fun. I'm going to test out a couple copies of Unsubstantiate in it today, I think. Somebody, they posted the competitive modern league list today. Yeah, and uh, somebody else had 5 would with a variation of it. I'd like to remand your Liliana the Veil, please. Don't know any other cards that are left. MTGO.com has the has the five O decks posted several times per week, twice a week, twice a week for modern, I think. Oh. Another thing that's worth noting about this deck versus the opponent's Mardu Pyromancer deck is that our deck is a full-on three-color deck. We're not just a two-color deck splashing Lingering Souls, so like Blood Moon's much better against our deck, which is why we can't play it ourselves. Yep. Ditch this Inquisition here. I don't know what you're talking about, Tannen. My opponent is interacting with my lands. This card this card interacts with almost every land on the battlefield. It is extremely interactive. Kids kids these days trying to say things that things that are interactive aren't interactive. No respect. No respect. At least we get to kill this Liliana. I use OBS to stream. OBS is the only fully cross-platform streaming application that I'm aware of. <laughs> uh, what if instead we didn't do that? I mean, they have nothing going on, so like, I guess we'll keep playing Magic till they draw Bedlam Reveler. And they get to play Faithless Looting, unfortunately. Just you know, puts them, puts them pretty firmly ahead, I think. All right, I'm gonna take one draw step here. These are my cards. My cards are uncastable. Ooh. Ooh. A retraw chat. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I guess this, like... This, like, kind of gives us a chance. I'm not saying it's a good chance. I'm just saying 
It's a chance. It's it's the worst tannin. It's just like that. This probably isn't good enough to win, but it's good enough to keep playing the game. Yeah, right, right, exactly, be rich. It's like the greatest tease. Just like, well, I can't concede in good conscience because there's a series of things that let me win here. Ooh. That, uh... Deal. Dr. Dre says, nothing you idiots. Dr. Dre's dead. It's locked in my basement. How are we doing today, folks, by the way? Welcome. Everyone's having a great, great Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? What day of the week is it? I lose track. Everyone's having a great, great whatever day it is. I'm gonna cast this before I play my land, because this way if I draw basic swamp dreadbore, I can cast it. Well, I mean, I got the dreadbore part, right? And this is just like a good example of Mardu Pyromancer would have Faithless Student to kind of churn through these extra lands at this stage in the game, and we just don't have access to that. You can't filter by format, Toxic Flames. Don't, don't filter by format. The format filters don't work because Magic Online, because Watsian technology. The last time they tagged their formats properly was in 2015. So if you go to, if you go to the Magic Online website and you click deck list, there's the competitive modern league. But if you filter by format and click modern, it's going to give you deck lists from 2015. You can't see it because my thing said from 2015 if you filter. Because apparently update. And this isn't because they don't know about it. I tagged them in a tweet a while ago letting them know that that was broken. And I'm sure other people have as well. I'm done playing this deck. We are, we are all done with this one. This, uh, yeah. This deck feels like... It's, it's doing things that are similar to both Grixis Shadow and Mardu Pyromancer without taking on the objectively most powerful thing that they could be doing. I feel like we took we took what the some of the stuff Mardu Pyromancer was doing and we took some of the stuff Grixis Death Shadow was doing and we cut the, the really good parts out of both of those decks and we put them together into this. And... I don't really know that Bedlam Reveler is a card that these Grixis decks want. I don't know that it really meshes what we have going on. Like giving giving up Faithless Looting is a big deal. Giving giving up Faithless Looting is a big deal. Um, if I wanted to work on this archetype some more, the things I would consider are one, fix the mana base. Read read my mana base article. If you haven't read my mana base article before, you should read that and build mana bases. Read my mana base article and talk about how to possibly make this mana base better. The TLDR is too many shock lands. Add some fast lands, add some creature lands. Uh, thing in the ice is the other thing I would consider. Thing in the ice is a powerful thing that's worth being in blue for, and it kind of synergizes with Bethlehem Reveler. All right. Um, I don't know that I agree with that. People keep talking about how Delve Threats and Thought Scour doesn't work well with this card. I think Thought Scour works fine with this card. I think Thought Scour works fine with this card. One other comment before I move on. Faithless Looting is just better than Thought Scour, right? So people that talk... There's a lot of people that have talked about Faithless Looting being like the brainstorm of modern and this other things. And the thing that people miss about that when they're saying stuff like that is that Faithless Looting is card disadvantage. Faithless Looting is powerful card selection, but it doesn't leave you card neutral. 
which means if you don't have cards like Lingering Souls or something else that you're using to generate value out of your graveyard, Faithless Looting is putting you behind cards. The only reason Faithless Looting is as good as it is in Mardu Pyromancer is because it's accompanied by Lingering Souls. That's why it's really good. So I, while I think I would play some lootings, I don't think I'd play four. I think we just don't get enough out of our graveyard without Lingering Souls.